Hey guys, Motor Car Nut here, and today we're talking engine knock, rod knock again. I get a lot of uh, questions, uh, what is it, can it be fixed? So I'm going to give you a visualization of exactly what it is, and why sometimes it costs a lot of money to fix, and if it's worth it for your car or not. So after this video, you'll probably have a little bit more of an informed decision on whether to do it or not. Or if you feel like the mechanic's charging a lot of money, you'll probably know why after this video. Okay, so engine knock, is a, that's a, a standard term people use, engine knock. It's basically what's happening is, is the rod piston is on here. Okay, it goes up and down in the cylinder. All right, you have a crankshaft. Okay, it goes up and down like this. Now... When people think about bearings, they think about ball bearings. There is no ball bearings on a crankshaft. What it is is a very fine mas machine surface. And, and, what, and, and the rod itself, like this, has bearings that are replaceable. That's these right here. Okay, you can see them. This is pretty much a good one. All right, nice and thick, uniformed. And one that was in the rod... As you can see, this one's all smashed. You see it's all smashed over here? Okay, and it's actually, it's actually welded its way on. And if you look at these journals, right? If you see this journal, this is actually these two bearings, like this, that actually welded itself on here and seized the engine. Now, why does it do that? Well, the engine has oil that pumps through everything that's mechanically moving, the camshafts, crankshafts, that's what these holes are for, okay? And believe it or not, a little thin, little thin piece of oil that goes right here, all right? It's like a thin coating that goes all the way around. That is all that keeps this bearing from touching, touching the steel crankshaft journal. It's amazing how it works, but that's all you got. There's a thin, thin film of oil inside here that keeps this suspended from the crankshaft, okay? It never touches this, it's amazing. Okay, now you can imagine you neglect your oil or you run low on oil and this gets, and, and this starts to lose its viscosity or, or like I said, if you run low on oil and, and it starts to get dry, then this is metal to metal and you know how long that's gonna take to seize up? A couple of minutes. All right, that's all it's going to take when this is metal to metal. So where's the knock part come in? Well, what it does is as it's as it's as it's seizing up. Okay, it's going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, right? And as as the oil starvation is there, it starts to heat up. It starts to it starts. It, there's a couple of ways it can do it. It can rip the bearing off completely. Where, like in this one, you have no bearing at all, okay? And then what it does is, with no bearing at all, now you have more clearance in here. And you hear that noise. That's, that's, the, that's the rod knock, they call engine knock. That's what that is, okay? So, bottom line is it's all about the oil. Now, it could be low on oil, like I said. It could be oil contaminated with, with um, never changing your filter. It scratches the surfaces and causes wear that way. It gets grooves in here, and then it loses its suspension because this has to be perfectly smooth, and this has to be perfectly smooth. If you start getting grooves in there, little by little, it's going to start hitting and touching, especially on acceleration or if you're towing. All right? So now, so how do you prevent this? Uh, and, okay, the number one, like I just said, all right, how do you prevent it is you always up on your oil changes. Make sure your oil is at the proper level. Make sure you change it every three to 4,000 miles, okay? And still, even with that, some cars have, have you know, a bad design. They're, these BMWs I work on, they have oil bearing clearances of a thousandth of an inch that I think that is way too too small, but that's what they use. And all it needs is one little, you know, one little interruption of the oil flow. And that thing is going to seize on there just like this one. It looks like a journal, but this is not. All right, that's a bearing. 
That's a bearing. I can chop it off. That's a bearing. Same thing with this one. You see how it's sticking out there? Yeah, we can like, it don't even want to come out. All right. And that bearing, I'll uh, try to do this. I'll show you. Get an idea. This is the connecting rod. That's the connecting rod cap. And the bearings. Uh, oh, this is the wrong one, of course. Okay, this is for the cap. Same bearings, but they're for the. Here, let me get the other one. All right. Let me put it in and just show you. Okay. And you see, now that you got a bearing in there. Now, when this is perfectly smooth, it's dirty, but it's this is a new one. Perfectly smooth. This is perfectly smooth. All right. When it rides on here, it's gonna ride nice and nice and smooth. You're not gonna hear it's gonna go up and down nice and smooth. And it doesn't take long for the bearings to get destroyed. Here's another bearing that was pitted. You see this? You can imagine this is like a sandpaper. All right. This is because of um, not changing your air filter or the oil filter. All right. Everything gets sucked in, burned, and you believe it or not, it all can end up on the bottom end of the engine. Okay. So now why is it? Okay. So what do you do if you do have a rod knock? All right. Mechanic says it's a rod knock. 100% it's a rod knock. Well, what you're going to do usually, it's the rod that, that, that seizes... Well, if it was a, if it was a main bearing, uh, it's not going to knock because it's the whole crankshaft spins. It's not going to knock. It's just going to seize. But usually, when it's an when it's an engine rod knock, it's going to be the bearing. So, obviously, on this thing, nowadays, you, years ago they used to be able to regrind them, but nowadays it all depends. If the crankshaft is very expensive and it's still will still be inspect after they take the bearing off, they measure them. You can get undersized bearings. All right, and they regrind it, and you're good to go. Okay, so now, let's assume that this crank is no good, all right? BMW says to replace it, you have to replace it. So, you're going to need a new crank as minimum, okay? And normally, what, what they're going to want to do is put brand new main bearings, okay? Let me show you what the main bearings look like. All right, they're bigger than the rod, but it's the same exact principle, same exact thing. It actually suspends the crankshaft. And here, here's the crankshaft. These are the main bear bearings over here. All right. It's in a cradle on this one. It doesn't have caps. It's all one thing. And when I'm turning this like this, like I said, that crank is not touching the bearing. That's all oil. Now, now, okay, let's get back to this. Let's get back to why it costs so much money and what's the, what can you do. If you're doing it yourself, if you're going to rip the engine apart yourself, best bet will be to get a new crankshaft, new main bearings, new rod bearings, and the rod that blew out, all right, that whole rod, you got to get that. But you see how the heat is on this? You can see it's a different color. This is that bronze and this is like a grayish. That's all that heat. You see it? All right, that's distorted. Obviously, this one's no good, but you don't replace you are you replace that rod as a minimum, and all the rod bearings. So if you get a new crank, it'll be standard. You get the standard mains, sta standard rods. You get a crank uh, connecting rod. That's at the minimum. Now this doesn't now this doesn't uh, um, factor in the cost to take the engine out of the car. If you're doing it yourself, you take the engine out of the car, you strip it all the way down, all right? It's a lot of labor, all right? And this is why it costs a lot of money for a mechanic to do it, okay? So now, let's say me, if what I would do, I would replace the crankshaft, I would replace all the bearings, mains and rods, all right? And I would check the pistons, you're gonna have to take them out. You got them wearing like this. Chances are, if you have bearing material or you have low oil pressure. Another one is low oil pressure can cause this. Um, chances are the filter, what you can do is cut open the oil filter and see if you see metal filings in there. You know, if you do, then everything where the oil went should be replaced. Here, this piston is not 
supposed to be like this. Look at this. All scored. These are no good. I would take them out. I'm not going to just replace the crankshaft and then the pistons are going to wear out within a year and then, you know, you, you, that's not good. All right. Pistons, new pistons, new rings. Um, like I said, the, the crank, like I did with this one. Let me show you this one. And the reason I'm showing this is to tell you if, if you get quoted, you know, to rebuild the engine a couple of thousand, three, four thousand dollars, and you have a car that's worth, you know, a lot of money, it's worth to do it. All right. This one has all the new pistons in there. And new, obviously, new piston rings. And. That's how I would do it, and then and then button it back up. Now, if you're going to try to do it yourself, like I just told you, the crankshaft at a, at a minimum, new bearings at a minimum, the rod that blew out, of, it's usually only one that blows. You get a new rod. And if I was you, when you pull out the rod, check the pistons. If the pistons look good, let me show you what, um, an, a used one. See, all of these are pretty much all worn. This is just for demonstration. I keep these just, you know, to make the video. This, this, is, this one's not that bad, even though it's still worn. When it wears away the the, uh, the black, but a lot of times they have fine little lines in there. And in the shiny area, if those fine little lines are still there it, it, the, and the piston is not scored, you can reuse it. You can clean out the, um, the uh, piston uh, oil control rings. You know, you know, sometimes it's just easier, or cheaper to get new pistons. But if all the little thin lines are still there, you can use it. If they wore away, I wouldn't use it. That'll create, like on this side, no good. That will create piston slap. I don't want that. All right? So I hopefully that you can get understand what it entails. And to do this, and you can imagine, the bigger the car, the bigger the engine, the more the harder it is to do it for cylinder engines are easier, I would say, some four-cylinder engines. I mean, you have a VW four-cylinder engine, it's easier to take out than an Audi with the same exact engine. So, you know, it, it, it's very, very um, dependent on the vehicle, the engine in the vehicle, and how much the, how much the car is worth to you, whether you want to do it or not, all right? So I hope that clears it up, you get an idea of what it is, what exactly happens. It's not good news, that's for sure. And how to fix it. Or how much it's gonna, you know, you, you how much it's gonna uh, probably run you to get an idea. Like, all right? So try to help you guys out. Motocar up, please subscribe. If you learned something, I would appreciate a super thanks. Uh, donation to the channel. And you have any questions, uh, I try to answer every question, try to help everybody as much as I can. And I've been doing that. I, I really appreciate all the comments that I give. Extremely positive. Uh, that keeps me going. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.